try too. So I've had a look at some of the cooling sort of situations and I've got a sort of rough map of where that's going to go. It's pretty straightforward. Got in and out the um, engine, so like water pump and the thermostat, and then it just has to go to the heaters, which is what that, um, that shiny pipe at the back does. Going to reuse the Honda Civic radiator that I had in um, with the other engine. Um, I mean, Ben's got it on his H22 powered Civic and it cools that fine, so I'm hoping with the two liter it should be okay um so yeah i've just got to tee that into uh into the bottom of the radiator here and then tee that into here somewhere i'm going to order the um a rebuild kit for the carb so while i wait for that to turn up i thought i'd have a look at what's going on with the exhaust i'm going to reuse the full length exhaust which i've got it's two inch from what i've read up online 200 brake two inch should be okay um you know i it's all stainless, so I may as well reuse it um, straight through back to the uh, to the cannon at the back. Um, so the that bit is all fine. Luckily, I did have to mess around a little bit with the um, gear selector because it's quite close there. So I've just played around with um, the that strengthening brace and just compacted it slightly and revised it, which is actually better to be fair. Um, so I've just got it it's on the mounts at the back in the middle. So it's just dangling around the front there. I've just got this bit of foam just to wedge it, hold it in place. So what I can do is adapt my old downpipe from the 1.3 to try and fit um, the two litre. I've got my two little helpers here as well. So here is the downpipe off the 1.3. So it's quite long. And that's because it used to go under the engine because on the 1.3, the um, turbo manifold and everything was on the front of the engine, whereas on this two litre, it's on the rear of the engine. So what I'm hoping I can do is use, reuse some of these bends, because again, this is all stainless stuff, um, and then the flex joint, and then just reconnect it. It should be a lot shorter to, um, to join it up, because like I said, we're going from the back of the engine to the end of that exhaust I just showed you. So that's the bottom of the turbo for the exhaust flange there, and it's got to sort of go to, to the middle, the middle sort of here-ish, just behind there. I've just uh, rested the drive shaft there as well, um, just to make sure I've got clearance for that. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be fiddly, but hopefully I'll be able to use what I've got and weld together something that's gonna work. made a downpipe now you've seen it all get welded together so it was quite a lot of trial and error and cutting and moving bits about and obviously it's not the easiest place to get to because you've got to go underneath and sort of hold things and mark things and tack things and untack things and then retack things so <laughs> it took me like a good couple of hours all in all just to make that tiny little bend but it's quite a complex bend because it's the angle of the flange on the downpipe is is like is off it's not flat so it's like a weird 45 degree angle and then it's not quite a 90 degree down so i had to chop up a bit of a 45 so um there you go so <laughs> it's on i haven't actually connected up the exhaust yet i'm just going to do that now and just make sure it all connects because i do need to get a gasket for that flange there because i don't have one so i'm not going to go crazy but i just wanted to make sure the rest of the exhaust will um connect up to it because uh, it's a little bit tight over to one side but i think it's going to be all right um, so I'll just have a look at that now. So if we crawl in there, you can see down pipe to the flex joint there, which I've reused, and then into the exhaust, the existing exhaust there. 
and then a all the way back to the old cannon. So I haven't put the middle one on yet. So it will go back slightly. I've just literally um, rested it in there. It's probably still got another oh, 20 mil to go back. It's all that amount. So that should tie up with that mount. It's a little bit close here, but um, you know, there's enough. There's enough movement there, um, and I think when I flatten out that bit there as well, when this this side can go up a little bit here, and that should bring that bit down that close bit there. So um, yeah, great success. <laughs> So as you can see, it's crusty as in the bottom of this carb. I'm assuming it's where the fuel has sat. So this is fuel, it's turned back into flipping, looks like it's turned back into carbon. And we'll try and get it to actually do a focus. You see it? Oh, it's like got that slight shininess. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. It's been sat a long time. So plumbing update. I've started plumbing in some bits and pieces on the engine. I've started with the coolant. As you would have seen, I've just done the exhaust. Although I did realize I probably am gonna to wanna to put a wide band in it at some point. So I might need to just whip the downpipe back off again and um, sort that out. But anyway, cross that bridge when we get to it. So yeah, coolant wise, this is what I've done so far. So obviously stuck the radiator in there. So I knew where it is. It's not fully mounted, but it, it literally sits like that. I've just put the slam panel in just so I know where it's supposed to go. So I can get a rough idea. Um, uh, we'll start with the bottom hose. So we've got expansion at the bottom of the expansion tank there has to tee into this bit. This comes off the water pump down to the bottom of the radiator. Uh, I've just teed it off here to the heater. That's where I looked on the original pictures. It came off this bottom hose to the heater. I'm assuming probably it's the return of the heater. Um, and then up through the radiator, out the top, just a little 90 that I've put in there, and then straight into the thermostat housing. Um, this pipe that goes to the heater at the back is factory, so that's pretty straightforward. Same this side, just put a little bit of rubber to the matrix, and then it's just it was just a case of doing the um, sort of overflow or bleed uh, pipe on the top there. That's pretty much it. I do want to take the radiator off and flush it out because some of the old antifreeze has gone a bit weird in there, so. Seemed to fit in all right, made just a little mount there just to take some of the weight, otherwise it's quite a big hose flopping around. But yeah, just from bits and pieces that I had lying around, bits off the old engine. The only uh, bits I had to buy was the T pieces, got these nice little plastic um, T pieces and they have like a couple of steps on them. So they fit more than one application and you just either cut off the ones on the end or obviously use them if you need the smaller diameter. And then there's a little step down here, which I had just to get to the right size to the radiator in there. Get another T piece there. So yeah, pretty happy with that. As you've seen, I've washed the carb out. So now I need to do the carb rebuild and then I can stick that on and the plenum. And then I can see where boost hoses are gonna go um, in the engine bay. Originally on the two liter, had like a crossover pipe and both pipes came down here and it had like a, a vertical intercooler. Um, so they both pipes came one side. Whereas the uh, intercooler that I had on it is like a straight through one. So it wouldn't make sense to go straight through and then back on itself again. So I need to figure out, you know, it might end up coming this way, but I need to figure out everything. But I need the carb on for that. So got a rebuild kit. Going to do that. Stick the carb on, then I can work out where the boost hoses are going to go. Hello. You'll paint them. So I managed to get this gigantic intercooler here. <laughs> it's actually off the Defender and it's like a full width upgraded one. But because it's got the inlet and outlet on one side, I think that's gonna work great for this application because we've got the turbo down there and the inlet will be up here when the um, plenum's on. So it will all be one side and then that way I don't have to have pipes going all the way across the engine bay. It should just be pretty much a straight shot across. So I'm gonna, uh, uh, the first snag is I need to move this uh, radiator across, but unfortunately I just filled it with um, coolant. So I'm trying to just see if it will fit and then I might just have to jiggle things around and mess around with my top quality hose down there. So I just moved it across slightly, stretched the hoses a bit and sort of just managed to nudge it over a little bit because the uh, inlet and outlet pipes couldn't fit in between. 
So hopefully with a bit of luck, it measured up all right. It should slot down. Look at that. There we go. Think something like that. Look at that. Perfect. So I've just uh, drilled the holes out in the bottom of the radiator support bit down there. Um, same on that side, just put some temporary brackets, just cable tied that on there to get it in the right place, but looks like it fits lovely there. The only problem I can see straight away is the slam panel. Well, obviously it touches there, but we've got a contact under here that um, I could probably grind it out a bit there and it might sit down uh, but <laughs> obviously uh, same sort of deal that side the only thing is I'm pretty sure the uh, bonnet catches on there so i uh, see what I can cut away and what I can leave there but it's close but yeah that's going to look mint look at that all the way up through uh right oil's in the engine now so i uh, i'm gonna just try the top quality diagnostics from the from the factory though so it's quite a cool little piece of kit uh, i got it with the job lot of stuff that i bought and it basically ignore the coolant one because that's for the efis it just checks the crank sensor and the knock sensor are working um and obviously the coil that sort of thing but so if i just get ben to turn the ignition on it should just have the choke light should come on right yeah so there you go see coils working there and i did look and it says they sh when it's on the static test they shouldn't light up which they don't i'm not sure why that one's lying up there but yeah uh fuel and i think it's like the choke light but it's basically ignition yeah that's saying there's no fuel in it probably because <laughs> there's no tank in it <laughs> Um, I've took the plugs out as well just to make it turn over easier. So uh, I think that's it really. If you just give it give it a quick crank and then we'll see what. Yeah, you ready? Yep. Yeah. Cool. It lit up. It did a thing. <laughs> I'll take that as a win. That means the sensors are doing their thing. Diagnostics done. Oh, cover the, cover the stuff, Alex. What's what's happened? What's so, happened? I think last time I plumbed it all up. Possibly. Since then. Um, Everything's sort of done wiring wise and that and we were trying to do the first start But basically the issue I ran into was we were getting no spark um, We've checked different coils and stuff and they've found that there is a resistance range they're supposed to be So we've got the one which is the best one in that range Best of a, a <laughs> slightly <laughs> below average <laughs> bunch yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, So but you know, it looks a bit rough but it's bang on in the range um, so yeah, I wasn't getting spark out of the ECU. Uh, a local guy, um, a tech auto, he's, he's had a look at it for me and he, he reckons it's basically the output transistor for the coil, which is why we're not getting any spark, because basically it takes it from the, um, the crank sensor, which is on the flywheel, sends it to the ECU and then that sends it to the coil. But we, weren't, we were getting voltage from the sensor, assuming to the ECU, but then nothing was coming out of the ECU. To the coil so he had a look at it couldn't find a new transistor thing tried a different one we tried that and then it something just blew and it still wasn't working i managed to find on ebay just a, an na two liter carb ecu so um and we've tried that and we're getting a spark to the just to the the king lead there just holding it on the block so now we're going to see if we're getting a spark out of the plugs and then from there, if we've got spark, um, we've already tested it and we've got fuel up to it. We'll double check, you know, it's not leaking, but we've got fuel coming up to it. I've just jerry-rigged up some <laughs> a nice sketchy jerry can as you do. <laughs> um, so. Send on. Send on indeed. Do we have a sparky boy? <laughs> There's definitely a spark. Now that relay's on. Should have a fuel pump noise. I mean, I can't see any leakages. Maybe do it. Maybe prime it a couple times. Ah, oh. oh, will it start? Will it start? Got a um, couple of batteries jerry rigged up to give it just that extra bit of oomph, haven't we? Yep. 
It was getting fuel around because I just had the return hanging out and then fuel came out of it, so <laughs> something's going on. I can't see no fuel coming out, mate. Maybe prime it a couple times, just uh Mm. What's that down there? A little bit? Yeah, it's coming out ever so slightly out of that clamp there. That, that. Oh, that. Time for the first start then, is it? I guess so. You got oil in it, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> got oil, got coolant. <laughs> <laughs> The paranoid side of me is just, yeah. This is why it's good to have someone else here, because you're just, well, I'm just like, yeah, go, go. Yeah. Someone to, like, think, right, you got this, you got this. Be sensible. Checking my 710. Yeah, it's got fucking oil in there, Tasty. Um, and water. It's probably worth leaving that cap off, actually, isn't it? Got there. Happy days. Needed? Well, I can keep an eye on things. Within reason, I don't know, there's nothing going to knock on each other or anything, is there? Hopefully Rodney doesn't make an appearance. Are you ready? I'm really quite nervous, it's not even my car. Oh no! <laughs> Maybe just go again, go again, mate. <laughs> Yay! Jesus! Got some, got some smoke coming out the wrong way though. <laughs> Gonna go again? Oh, it might be some of the um, oh, like assembly lube and stuff all. Get on.